England, August 1882, at the end of the Zulu Wars. At a country residence of Her Imperial Majesty Queen Victoria, amidst an unprecedented blaze of publicity and public interest in the Zulu people of Southern Africa, an historic meeting took place between the Queen, her political and military advisers, and the defeated and exiled King of the Zulus. He came with one aim in mind. He wanted his kingdom back. Your Majesty, His Highness Setswayo Kampande Zulu. Lobogaz. Lobogaz. Siyao bonga omu sawe Lobogaz ya bamshope. Sifisa uwa ka ubushobo ogonompe. His Highness thanks Her Imperial Majesty for the kind way he has been received in Great Britain. He hopes he is here, he says, to seal that pact of friendship once and for all. Your Majesty, the colonial office feels that any act of clemency would be a grave miscalculation of the Zulu threat. Mark, gentlemen, we're not merely concerned here today with a dispute over territorial borders or the revendications of a defeated king. We are called upon to defend Africa. It is, I believe, our sovereign duty, Mark, to safeguard the well-being of those of our countrymen who have settled in these distant lands, as well as that of the Kaffir tribes who look to us to bring peace to this land that has, for the past 60 years, been devastated by one of the most formidable military empires ever created, the empire of Shaka Zulu. They are represented by his legitimate heir, King Chetswayo. Professor Bramston. Shaka Zulu, Your Majesty. Yes, the founder of the greater Zulu nation and the Zulu Empire reigned from 1816 to 1828. Most definitely one of the greatest military geniuses in history. Certainly on the level of a Caesar or an Alexander the Great. Imagine, if you will, the prodigious feats accomplished by this 19th century African Achilles, Shaka Zulu. In less than 12 years, he transformed a handful of idyllic, relatively harmless herdsmen who were by nature reluctant to engage in any form of warfare into a Spartan army of over 80,000 highly trained ruthless warriors extending his influence over most of Southeast Africa. An empire compatible in extension and might to that of Napoleon and in treachery to that of Genghis Khan. Your Majesty, a gentleman, the war machine created by Shaka Zulu was so monolithic, it has survived his death by almost half a century. Yes, yes, the crown has now defeated it, but that defeat is purely temporary. It can and will rise again and again if we do not stop it once and for all. And why? Because King Shaka was no ordinary mortal. He was a messiah, a god figure. Like an African Mephistopheles, he gave the Zulus glory in return for their souls. Wielding the forces of life and death on an endless battlefield of blood and carnage. Your Majesty. Ma'am, the threat is real and the decision before us clear. Therefore, the colonial office suggests that we constitute within the Zulu kingdom a progressive destruction and dislocation of the military and economic system. In so doing, we feel that the Zulu people, deprived of central leadership, will revert to the state of innocuous bliss that they enjoyed before the insane conditioning of Shaka. I tend to agree with Kimberley. If the Zulus won't bend, break them and be done with them. That's what I say. Well, I rather think we'll be doing them a favor. A return to the plough should prove to be most therapeutic for these savages. Might even bless them with a hint of civilization. <laughs> Am I meant to translate, my lord? That won't be necessary, sir. We have so little in common, especially our concepts of human respect. Thank you, your lordships, for your chivalry.
does Shaka Zulu mean to you? He was one of those rare men who had the courage to live his ideals and to instill his dreams into the hearts of his countrymen. That is precisely why we cannot give you back your realm. Shaka Zulu is more alive today than ever. His military strength still prevails. You are the king, but it is his spirit which rules your people. We are a practical woman, your highness. We will not form an alliance with a legend. Some six decades earlier, was disbanded. The king's territory subdivided 